for cheap, fast, and reliable coins. Make sure to head on over to my sponsor, buymadencoins.com. They got quick delivery, 24-7 support, and make sure to use code POOL at checkout for 20% off and an extra 10% coins at checkout. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Olden Team video. And today, going over the house rules, I'm a day behind. I actually just completely blanked and forgot that they came out yesterday when I made this stuff. I guess I was so, like, involved with the draft pick set and complaining about that that I completely just missed house rules. And house rules are a cool weekly little change up for people to do something sometimes competitive. It depends on the win total, obviously, if it's going to be competitive or not. But it gives you free rewards. Some people were complaining about it, saying, like, oh, like, Madden's dumb because they give so many free rewards. Now, like, I don't think that's the case. I do get from that. I do get the aspect of, like, you've been grinding since day one, spent all this money, and people just come on now and have the same cards you have. But that's only partially true because a 97 overall I get for free is not equivalent to my powered up, all the way, chemmed out team. It just does, it's not, like, a 97 is not even that useful unless it's all part of a team like that. So I don't know how much I really agree with that. But anyways... Let's get into this video, boys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to get us to 50 likes if you could. I'd really appreciate that. Make sure to comment down below. Still working on that series with the Wheel Pup, so comment challenges down below. I need a bunch, so I have it ready for when the video comes out, and I'm ready to do it. And uh, make sure to subscribe. That's all I ask. Keep, let's keep the momentum going. Now getting to this video, so house rules. So let's see what the rewards are. I'm pretty sure it's a Color Smash player, but I have not checked yet. But they got to change that up if it is, because it's been kind of repetitive these past few weeks. So we go in. House rules, our house, our rules. Let's see. 10 total wins. So it's not going to be competitive. It's just going to be get 10 wins. I already told this strategy. When it's 10 wins, all you got to do is go into a game. If you want to be quick, 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 you go into a game and you just you either play it or you quit it. And what I mean by that is when you start the game, if it looks like it's going to be a competitive head-to-head, -head, play the whole game out, just quit because it's just a waste of time, truthfully. Because this te when it's, if it was six in a, row, in a row, it's competitive, but 10 total... No one's trying. No one's really... Be like, the people are trying. Excuse me. But they're not being competitive. So, what I would personally do is just focus on the quick wins. Like, bomb the ball. Do some deep, big plays. You know, get your first score. Go for the... And then I'll get to the challenge in a second, which is all 2 one conversions are now quadrupled in value. You earn 8 points for running a successful play after a touchdown. With only 3 minutes per quarter this week, you may as well take a chance to go for gold. So, you get 2-point conversions. So, the way you want to win this game... You can play at regular offense, right? Regular offense. When you get down to the... But if you get the ball first, let's say. You get down to the goal. Plays that I would recommend. Stretch. Quick, uh, quick... quick obviously, quick passes are always in there if, you, if you're good at that. But I would recommend stretch, pitch, or high, high point fades. Whatever play you like for high point fades. So, if you can score six points and then get the eight, that is 14 points. If you can... The person might quit right there. Or if you stop on the next play drive, which would be very easy if you're good at defense... You know, run some 3-3-5, run some nickel blitz, whatever you want to run. Should be pretty quick. And that is why I go with that quit method for this specifically because it doesn't make sense. So if you do, let's say you do 10 total 10 total games, right? Let's break out the calculator. If you played a full game, it is three minute quarters this week, which will still be almost 30 minutes if you played a full game. Let's go with 35 minutes. I'll go with 30. 30 for a full game times it by 10. That's 300 minutes. Divide that by 60. That's five hours. It would take you five hours to play every single... I was easy, man, because it was 30 minutes. But that would take you five hours to play every game if it went all the way through. It's a long time. Now, let's say this. You only play the first drive of every game, right? So, if you're pretty good at this game, it shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. Even if you're not that good, it would just take a little bit longer. But you could probably get out of games within 10 minutes if you do it properly. You get into the game. You score. You strike early. You get the two-point conversion. And then you got to stop them. And even if you don't stop them, as long as I don't score two-point, you just got to score again. So... You could easily finish these games on an average of about 12 minutes per game times 10. It'll be about two, under two hours you could do this in. You can get a free 97 overall player in under two hours if you play this right. Do I advocate quitting? Typically, no. But this isn't competitive. This isn't, this, is, this isn't about having fun. This is about getting your free rewards that Madden owes us. I don't know if that sounds entitled. But besides the point, these are about getting free rewards. See, if it was six in a row, I'd say, why would you quit? That's dumb. You know, finish your games out. But in this sense, it helps everyone out, right? You quit. You give them a win. They quit, they give you a win. Like, everyone everyone wins here if everyone just keeps quitting. You know what I'm saying? So, in my opinion, quit method is the only method for this one. Unless you really just enjoy it. If you, if you enjoy this and you enjoy playing this one, just play it out, have fun. But on top of the players, so if you get 10 total wins, let's say you finish both, you can get about almost 80,000 coins, 40 trophies. So, 40 trophies is almost half of 100. Well, let's say it's about, it's about one-fifth of John Madden, so that's not bad at all. 
if you want a John Madden, or it's about half of a John Madden upgrade. So in literally two weeks of house rules, you can have a John Madden upgrade. You could have like a hundred, what's that? 160,000 coins. That's amazing. But for this week, only 80,000 coins, 40 trophies, a Nat Color Smash Pack, 1,000 coins per win. It's, it's kind of a no-brainer to do. Now, who would I choose? Going to do this again. I know I probably said this before. Who would I choose? But there are more options now. And not to mention, besides there being more options, not everyone's seen this video. Probably some new viewers, because every time I post one of these videos, I typically get a few new viewers on these. So, heading over to sets. That's where I like to do it out of, just because it's the easiest place to see them all. So, the defense and the offensive. So, I'm going to rank them real quick for you guys. Why is there this? Oh, okay, that's irrelevant. Okay, so we got this one right here. Defensively, there's Derwin James, Chubb, Akeem Tlaib. Not going to spend too much time on this. I've done this so many times. So, worst one here, Akeem Tlaib by far. Is he good in a theme team? Yes, but that's not an excuse. Like, he's, he shouldn't, like I'm not going to rank him based on the theme team. Like, we're going base, no camps. Keep Tlaib's last. Miles Jack is third. Miles Jack is good in coverage. He's fast. But I'd much rather have, like, a Lawrence Taylor or any of those other guys on the outside. Lawrence Taylor, Von Miller. In the, in the depending, you know what I'm saying? Now, when it comes up here, Derwin James and Bradley Chubb are the top two. I'd have to go with Chubb at number two and Derwin James at one. Derwin James, Der, Derwin James can catch. He's fast. He can play zone. He can play man. He can hit. And he's tall. Kind of a no-brainer. Bradley Chubb's at two because he's a right end. Red ends are always, always useful. Pass rushing. You can never go wrong with a pass rusher. Like, if you think about a cornerback, a line, outside linebacker, safety. The end's a safe pick. Not the position you always want to invest in, but it's always a position of need. Your front seven is arguably one of the most important positions on the field because, as you've seen in Wheel of Pub, if you can't, if you don't have time in the pocket, no matter how good you are at this game, no time in the pocket really hurts you. You know, you need at least a second or two, typically. I mean, obviously, competitive players maybe need less, but I'm not a competitive player. Now, getting into the offense, these I'll go over a little bit more because I haven't really done them in depth yet, just due to the amount of time I've spent on this. So we got AJ Green, Big Ben. Demar Dotson and Brandon Sheriff. So, last here has to be AJ Green. Now, before I get crucified for that one, if you guys know anything about how this game plays at this point, like, do I love AJ Green? Yes. Would I have loved him earlier in the year? Yes. But at this point in the year, a 92 speed just ain't cutting it. At this, every wide receiver, like, pretty much at this point, every wide receiver is 99 speed. When Kem Dub, and he doesn't. He will not have it unless he's on a theme team. And even then, it'll be close. So, even his catching stats, like, they're good, but they're not, like, you know what I'm saying they're not like Calvin, they're not like Odell. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't make sense to me. Non chemmed up, Odell has better stats. And then you toss the chems on Odell, be 99 almost everything. AJ won't. Calvin Johnson blows him away too, and Calvin Johnson's taller. So if I have to pick there at that price point, I'm going Calvin all day. So I'm trying to avoid this AJ Green at all costs. Unless you have a Bengals team team, be my guest. So I'm gonna put him last. Second to last, gotta be Big Ben. Pretty simple on that one as a quarterback. I mean, quarterback's not a really position that like you want to have a nap player at to begin with, as it is. Not to mention the meta in this time of the year. I mean, unless you have a steal, even if you're a Steelers team team, you're probably still rocking Vic. So it doesn't really make sense. The stats aren't even that good for the typical pocket passer with low speed. If I had to deal with a pocket passer of that speed, I'd probably go with the Mahomes who can pass better and can run better, or a Dan Marino or Tom Brady if they're just gonna be statues. So it doesn't really make sense to me. And people say like, oh, 75 isn't a statue. You're right, 75 wasn't a statue three months ago. But when everyone has a 95 plus like fucking speed on their team, 75 is a statue. I, I know personally, cause I'm just playing wheel pup with Luke Falk, who has like a 70 something speed. And literally he felt so slow. Even Vic feels slower than he used to. Like even Vic has trouble running now. So everyone, pretty much if you're below a 95 speed at quarterback or 90 speed, you're pretty much a stature at this point, depending on the team you're playing, obviously, but for the most part, you're versing amazing teams. Now, last but not least, these are the top two guys. I think overall and out of both of them, I eh, know Derwin James and Bradley Chubb are up there, but if I had to rank them, Brandon Scherf at two. It, when you have this guy powered up and chemmed up, he's going to have almost 99 everything when it comes to blocking. That's unreal. And I'm pretty sure his lead block is pretty good too. Uh, where is it? It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Why is it so low? Okay, 96. So yeah, Kem Dub's gonna have almost everything maxed. Awesome card. But I have to give the top spot to Demar Dotson. This card is awesome. Kem Dub, he will have everything 99 for a fact. Like look at this: 98, 98, 98, 97, 97, 94. Decent strength. Go to almost maxed awareness, and he's six foot nine. Something about six foot nine at right tackle just sounds cool to me. I think Demar Dotson is my number one overall player for the defensive set by far. 
And where is his straw? Was that speed? Eh, it's not too fast, but it doesn't really matter. This guy's tall. He can block. He's an awesome anchor on the tackle spot. Got to go with him. So, boys, that is about it for this video. Hope the tips helped. Hope the choices helped. Hope you guys make the right choice with your player because, you know, these are now. Once you have them, you're stuck with them. And I, I just hope everything, my content's been helping late, lately. Hopefully, this isn't the only video I do today. I will see, depending on upload speeds and everything for today. But that's about it, boys. The new lights just came in, so I should have them set up for tomorrow's video. That's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, 50 likes, comment, and make sure to subscribe. I'd appreciate it a lot. Thank you. I'm out. See you in the next video.